you can ask, well, then what is normal? The day that we control the genome, is there going to be some place somewhere where there's a normal human and you're going to take your genome and comp that you're about to control in your unborn child and say, let me adjust it so that it matches this, so that all your senses are working as they're supposed to and mm -hmm. all the proportion. Is that, is that the future? We should ask that. Yeah. Because if that's what you're going to do, you're going to homogenize the species. Yes. Okay? Do you realize uh, I, I have a run here of content. I have a run of descriptions of what people have accomplished. Okay? All right, so, so for example, there's a guy, uh, there's a guy growing up, he wanted to play basketball, okay? And he wanted to be like be a professional basketball player. All right. So he worked really hard at it. And he just wasn't tall enough. So he says you should give it up, take on but he stayed with it. Stayed with it. He said, no, this is, basketball is for tall people. You're not tall, okay? Um, he now plays for the Harlem Globetrotters. His name is Hotshot, what's his last name? Uh, well, Muggsy Bogues is a great example. Well, no, that, but right? this, no, this guy is four feet five. Whoa. Yes, he's genetic, he's a genetic dwarf. People told him he can't play basketball, and now he's one of the most popular Basketball players, there he goes. Wow. Okay? Swanson, hot shot Swanson. Okay? Well, well there kind well, of seems my point like there'd is, be an advantage all I'm of being saying that is, small so you can move around that I, I, all I'm, I'm making a, a different point. <sighs> okay. Yes, the best part of the point. Right. The point is, when you look at someone and they're not, quote, normal, and then you start listing what you think they should not do in life. Mm-hmm constraining the options that maybe they have ambitions that are greater than anything you imagined. Right. And so there's a letter. There's a letter beautifully written of a, a, someone took a voyage on a, on, a, on a steamship in 1915, and I, rep, I reproduced the letter in here. Beautifully written. And uh, this passenger get, get, was given a tour of their steamship, okay, by the captain. And this letter, I, I, I can't find it in here, but it's, it's beautifully. I mean, is there time for me to read something? Sure. Can I, can I do? You have plenty of time. I, I got to read it. Hold we on have here. all the time Just in the world. Give me a second here. And you talk among yourselves. What, what, uh, how about a letter written on April 10th, 1930, to Captain Von Beck of the U.S. Lines SS President Roosevelt? That's Teddy Roosevelt, of course. The captain had given a tour of the bridge to a passenger who later that day waxed poetic about the experience. Again, I stood with the captain on the bridge, and he was quiet and composed in the presence of a million universes, a man with the power of a god. In imagination, I saw the captain standing on the bridge, gazing into the wide canopied heavens and seeing the darkness sprinkled with stars, systems, and galaxies. That passenger was Helen Keller, a 1904 graduate of Radcliffe College. Okay? So what my point is, and I have other, there's a whole run of pages mm -hmm. of things, and, and there's a whole description of Hotshot here, okay, from the Harlem Go Trust. My point is, the moment you homogenize, and quote, normalize who and what humans should be, you have cut off so much of what has enriched civilization simply because people were different. Yes. Simply because. Yeah. And, and so if everybody's the same, what kind of world? I don't want to live in that world. Give me, give me a different world. Do you worry that... I got another one here. Let me, one please. more. Okay. Okay. Um. You probably know this, but those who don't know the name, hold off on the hold off on it. Okay. Okay. Here it is. Jim Abbott. You know Jim Abbott is? Sure. Okay. Some people won't, but here it goes. Jim Abbott wanted his whole life to be a professional baseball player. A dream shared by many American boys. Jim wanted to be a pitcher in the major leagues. He succeeded and played for many teams, chalking up a mixed record of wins and losses. But on September fourth, nineteen ninety three, 
while playing for the storied I don't remember. New York Yankees. Dude. I thought it was the Mets. No. <laughs> I'm he, not a big He pitched a no-hitter. That's when no batter gets a hit in the entire game. There have been about 320 no-hitters in Major League history out of 220,000 games played. Due to a congenital birth defect, Jim Abbott was born without a right hand. Mm. Is Jim Abbott disabled? Is he? He pitched a fucking no-hitter for the New York Yankees. What, what I'm saying is, obviously not everyone who has a disability will achieve this way. Yes. I don't want to, uh, uh, don't get no. me wrong here, but what I want to say is, look at what people would have told, and I have six other examples here, one right after another. What people would have told them coming up, and Temple Grandin among them, probably the most famous autistic person there ever was. She's professor of, of farming at, was it the University of Colorado, somewhere in the, in the West, where because she sees the world the way animals do, she could advise farmers in ways they can handle and herd cows that does not create stress in them. She figures stuff out. She has research papers. Yes. But you're going to say, oh, she's not the life of the party. Get her out of here. <laughs> what, what, do you, what, what are we doing? Can as, I give you an example, a personal example? What the hell? And so I, I was angry writing that chapter. I was angry. Mm. One more. I, I got to go. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me keep. Okay. Let me give you a personal go. example. My jujitsu instructor. Yes. John Jacques Machado. Yes. Was born with on his left hand. He only has a thumb. He is a genetic defect where he has no fingers on his left hand. Call it a genetic feature. A genetic feature. Well, <laughs> See, you're him, value judging. It is a feature because okay. he's a multiple-time world champion. There and it is. And because of the fact that he was born with this one hand that didn't have fingers, he developed a style of jiu-jitsu that enabled him. You see his hand there? Uh -huh. He's one of the absolute best that's ever done it. And he developed a style of jiu-jitsu where he utilizes that left hand to get under chins mm. because it's not encumbered by the, other the fingers mass aren't in of the, way. the fingers. Uh -huh. And he slides it in there and sinks rear naked chokes on people. And he also developed a style that didn't rely on grips. On over, He uh, d developed a style that's overhooks and underhooks, which became modern no-gi jiu-jitsu, which is incorporated in mixed martial arts because in mixed martial arts, they don't wear the kimono. And people who have fingers probably would have never even thought to think that way. And people who saw Jean-Jacques Machado as a child said, oh, this poor child, he right. will never reach his full potential and turned out to be one of the greatest 